So the big box is two motorcycle tires, wheels and tires out of China. They're basically the size of a front wheel on a regular motorcycle though. I don't remember if they're actually 21s, but they're close. I've got about 31 pounds of groceries from Sam's Club, plus a care package from a new Patreon. Joseph, thank you very much. Ironically now I've got two Joseph Patreons, just to make it confusing. It's good to have a spare though. Time now is 1.30. So I left here at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, was at the post office before 11. Had a flat tire on the trailer coming back, ran over a thorn. I saw it. I couldn't get around it fast enough. Somebody dragged some thorns out on the road. Yeah. So I've got two motorcycle wheels and the go-kart rear axle kit that I'm hoping I can use to cobble everything together for turtle so I can start running electrics. Oh, also not quite in the shot. The other bike. This one we haven't been riding much lately, but what happened was uh, about two rides ago, three rides ago, something like that, the blue bike, which I have been riding most of the time, it's a like a 700 series wheel, so it's a little bit taller. This is just a little bit too small for me. But this one has front suspension, has 18 speeds, all right. So in theory, it's a better bike, but it's a little bit too small for me. Well, the blue bike, the other one, I broke three spokes on the rear wheel, partially because of load and the rough road and pedaling too hard and all that kind of stuff. So this is the one I rode home from El Paso the day I sold my truck. It was pretty much worn out after that ride, so I had to replace the tires and the tubes and do a bunch of work on getting it up to speed. So basically, since then, I haven't rode it. But with the blue bike out of commission, I had to work on this one and put it back together. So fortunately, I, I had already bought spare tubes and tires for the 26-inch wheels. <clears throat> the trailer has been majorly updated again. This has happened a few times now. I bought these... 20 inch wheels, these are trailer wheels or cart wheels from Northern Tools. They were about $25 a piece. They're rated at I think 250 pounds, something like that. What's nice about them is they're set up for a half inch, half inch axle shaft. So I just use a bolt, ran it through the wheel, spin a nut on and we're done. So I had to make up an axle for it, but that was pretty easy. This is still based on the hand cart from the original survival off-grid blah 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 DIY bike trailer. So the hand cart just makes a good strong sturdy chassis so I, I keep hanging on to it. The basket that everything is sitting in was is made for turtle so when I get turtle working I'll just move the basket over and then on the axle this time I've got a long piece of U-channel left over from uh, one of the school bus seats and I welded a bolt into the inside of the U-channel and then that's what the uh, the wheel rides on and that a couple pieces of scrap is welded on the bottom. So that seemed like it worked well. Uh, what was really nice is when I had a flat tire on the trailer today on the way home, I had the wrench obviously, spin off one nut, find a rock, prop up the trailer on the rock, pop the wheel off. It's, it's faster to change that wheel than it is on a bicycle. This is a tactical lunch bag is what it was called on uh, Amazon. I've, I used it for a lunch bag for quite a while. These straps fit on the handlebars real nice. It's a nice place to keep odds and ends. So my wallet, my keys, uh, some of the tools I'm putting in here now because it's just easier to get them out again. If, they, if the tools are in the tote, which is where I was putting them, you can't get to them. You got it. You know, it's all full of stuff. So, and my my hoodie today. It's like at the moment it's hot almost. I'm sweating, but I didn't want to start taking too many layers off because the wind was still blowing. Because I did have a flat tire. I was keeping my there it is. Keeping my pump handy. Extra water. This has yeah. I was running out of room so. Got the cliff bars and uh, like an eight pack of chicken soups. That's Marie Callender's brand. Pretty good stuff. Alright. Okay, the tote. This gets used a lot. It's just 
just nice to have something that you can put all the little stuff in. Okay, so that was the cliff bars, then also granola bars, because they're cheaper. Cough drops, mostly for allergies. Chunky sirloin burger soup. This is really good. Heavy though. I'm starting to look when I buy something is like how much does it cost and how much does it weigh? That's a factor. Coffee, that's only four pounds, so that was worthwhile. A couple packages. This is for the uh, the wheels, and then I got a care package. I mentioned I had a care package from Patreon. The rest of what's in the tote, I always keep a few extra bungees and cargo straps and stuff because I'll end up with a random load that doesn't fit all neat, neat nicely and neatly, whatever. Uh, another six pound, almost seven pound box there. Yeah, I had uh, 31 pounds of groceries this time. Not counting uh, motorcycle parts. They're actually motorcycle wheels for the bicycle, in case anybody was curious. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, he said it's gonna be a bunch of random stuff. Cool. Okay, dry erase markers, that's always good. That's funny, that's, some of these are the same brand as the ones I have, so I'm like, <laughs> how did that happen? Safety glasses, good to have. I'm not gonna open everything up, but that's a bunch of electronics parts. That's cool. It looks like Raspberry Pi stuff, maybe. More safety glasses. Notepads, always use those. Post-it notes. Uh, looks like uh, 12 volt lighting. Oh, cool. Another 4K camera. It's the second or third of those I got now. Oh cool, a bunch of DuPont cables for Raspberry Pi stuff. That's always good to have. Uh, breadboards. And cable, but I'm not sure, it might be for the camera. I'm reluctant to open everything up out here. Another light. Oh, this is one of those really bright ones, I think. Dual temperature controller. Cool. Bunch more electronic stuff, like, uh, looks like a Arduino kit, I think. Oh man, a whole bunch of circuit boards. Gonna get busy with those. Another breadboard. Another light. That's cool. Fancy leather. Oh, adventure notebook. That's cool. That's really nice. Thank you. Oh, with the Navy anchor on it and uh, ship's wheel. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Oh, and, okay, um, two cameras. So this is a pan tilt camera for like a security camera. That's pretty cool. So I can see all the goings on out here. Awesome. Okay, let's get that stuff put away. Lumped together. So. In what universe do you take your bicycle to go get motorcycle wheels, right? <laughs> Honestly, there are days I look at my life and I'm thinking, as smart as I think I am, is this really the best I can do? Okay, this is gonna be 100% better, okay. That is cool. That is very cool. That's a good size too. Let me see if I can get the bike. I was curious, it's like, 
I don't know what the deal is, but motorcycle wheels and bicycle wheels don't always seem like they're sized the same or something. The idea is that will become the rear wheels for Turtle because they should be able to handle the, the the rugged smashing around of what I'm going to be doing to them. Off road use only, we won't tell anybody. Yeah, these are 19. 70 by 100 by 19. Okay. So that's a 19 inch wheel. The bicycle has 26 inches. And ironically, they're almost the same size. Now, how do you how do you even get your head around that, right? Because I'm sitting here going back and forth, and I'm like, how do you figure out what size you need, right? Finally, I saw one. This was on eBay. In the description, they listed how tall it actually was. And I'm looking at that, and I'm like, I think that'll work. I'm going to have to make some adapters, I'm pretty sure. But what I'm looking at, I don't know if this will show up from there. I'm not going to get all carried away. This will be in the next video when I get back to it. One side of the wheel has four lugs on it. That's where your disc brake would normally mount. The other side is smooth, okay? What I'm gonna do is use these lugs with an adapter. That's how I'm gonna actually drive the wheel. So it'd be kind of the same as if you mounted your sprocket to that, but I'm gonna make it a, make a flange that'll mount to it, have a keyway that goes to the axle. That's how I'm gonna um, put the engine power to the rear wheels. Those are not going to break. That's a lot better. Okay. This is the axle. Now parts of this um, were sticking out of the box, so hopefully it's all there. But that's a good beefy axle. This is, I think it's over an inch in diameter in the middle, and then it's turned down. It's got uh, splines and splines, and it's drilled for your cotter pin on the castle nut. Okay. That's good and strong. So it's got en enough area that you can move the. It comes with the bearings. It comes with the wheel mounting flanges. It comes with um, a disc brake kit and also a sprocket kit. So because they turned it symmetrically, I can put the sprocket on one side and the disc brake on the other, or move it around a little bit. So the trick will be mounting those on here. Might have to get fancy with that. And this is a better start than what I had the last time, so that's that. There's a lot more parts. I'm not going to open it up yet. Let me think. The wheels, about 100 bucks a piece. The wheels have bearings, tires, wheel, and that's it, I think. I'm spending about 400 bucks on the two wheels and the, and the axle, so, and the bolts that I bought to put them together with, so. But yeah, the axle came with disc brake, sprocket, bearings, and flanges to mount the wheels to. So, okay, I'm not going to replay everything here, but I'm going to try to kind of cover some of what has worked and some of what hasn't. This is kind of the follow up for this trailer project. First off, this is the same hitch that I had on the blue bike, but it because this bike has a derailleur, the blue bike was single speed, so I had to make some adjustments here. So in the process of that, I ended up uh, turning this hitch over to get it out of the way of the derailleur. Then I had to cut a bunch of metal out and it was bending a lot. So the last time I rode it, the whole tail was wagging. So I had to add some more metal up there. So that's that seemed to have worked a lot better. Also, um, okay, so this hitch set up here, it's not ideal, but it is working pretty well. Um, I've got bolts going three different directions so that this whole thing can, like if the bike lays over, like, you know, if I just don't want to put the side stand down, I can tip the bike over and the, the hitch pivots, okay? Um, it doesn't bind in any direction. It's not perfect, but it does work pretty well. You know, it moves. That's kind of a, a good and a bad thing. I've noticed this whole thing bouncing sometimes on the road. So that's not ideal, but it's what it is. Okay. Let me just take care of this so I don't lose these. Um, most of the pivots I'm still using 
7 16 bolts uh, but two of them the actual pin that I'm putting back in is a half inch or yeah sorry uh, 5 16 I think it's a half inch wrench 5 16 bolt so it's it's one size bigger than the quarter inch hardware everything else is quarter inch this bolt is stainless I wouldn't have necessarily that but I had it from before and stainless is typically harder so I figured it was worth a shot okay. so many things have changed sometimes rapidly so let me just kind of flip this over real quick the most obvious change you're in the wrong spot yeah. The hand cart was using the original wheels for quite a while, and they, they pivot way down here, right? I just left it like that. A couple times I had swapped out wheels, put something bigger on, but I always left the wheels more or less at the back. The problem was that put a lot of weight on the bicycle. I kept thinking, man, I really want to move those wheels forward to distribute the weight better, and I, I just never did it. Finally, when I broke the spokes on the blue bike, and I'm like, Duh, that's what's happening. There's so much load on the bike that it was really becoming a problem. So these wheels are set up with a half inch axle. So you just put in a half inch bolt, put the nut on and you're done. So I just welded from the bottom, put a half inch bolt. Actually, I took a piece of half inch iron pipe first, welded the bolt into the pipe. I don't know if that made any difference or not. And then welded the pipe into the U-channel. Bigger wheels are gonna roll better. That's, that was given. The issue was, those little wheels on the, that came with the cart lasted since, now I didn't ride it every month, but I sold the truck in April, and this is January. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. Eight or nine months? I rode it at least once a month, sometimes twice a month or every week, 30 miles round trip. Those little wheels lasted forever. I never had a flat tire on those. Second, first time out with these, actually second time. I've tested these wheels once, but a different axle. Second time out, I get a flat with these ones. I'm like, ah, you know. <laughs> anyway, bigger wheels roll better. Moving the center of gravity, or moving the pivot forward, moving the axle forward, makes a huge difference. Now, if you look at, from the side, the, the basket, the wheels are just about centered in the basket. That might be a little bit too far forward. What I was noticing on this ride, I could set my load in there. And I actually was adding, the, the reason the backpack was in the front was to push the load forward a little bit. So, anyway, that's that. Um, what else? I'm not sure how many of these changes are or you know when did they happen kind of thing I've, I've made very various updates as we went and uh, the basket is made to fit turtle it's pretty strong it's bolted onto the hand cart you can still see the original black is the hand cart uh, the brown parts are left over school bus seat parts and the silver stuff is conduit I had some pieces of conduit that I have a conduit bender so I just found pieces that were long enough that had the bends in them, and these are welded together. So I didn't do that good of a job, but they polished out fairly nice, so it came out looking kind of cool. That way, when I put the tote in there, it doesn't fall off. I've had days before I put the basket on there, if I was hauling trash to the dump, which is on my way to town, I, I'd stop every mile and pick up pieces that were falling off. You know, you can't put a, a bungee strap across the trash bag. It won't stay, right? So this solved that problem like really nicely. So I could throw a box in there. Um, it won't fall off. And then I just put a strap on it to keep it from falling out, you know, like bouncing out. But uh, the way it's actually set up now, the axle is welded to the basket this time. It just seemed like it worked better, so it was kind of a quick hack, but this way it's a, it's a solid enough little trailer, and I'm, I'm actually close right now. 
I'm, I'm considering pulling the hand cart out and then just making a new hitch. Then I could actually use the hand cart because I do miss that. Quite often around here, I would grab the hand cart to move something around. It's just really handy to have. So eventually I'll probably do that. But in the meantime, the hand cart is super strong and it made a really good chassis for the, for the trailer. Now, all of this is ridiculously heavy, right? But with the axle moved forward, I really don't notice, even with 40 or 50 pounds of load back there, it balanced really good. I didn't feel it really. You feel the weight when you're going up a hill, but just riding along, you're like, yeah, you know, you're pedaling a little bit harder, but it's not too bad. Um, those tires are less than two inches wide. I think they're 175s. Out here in the sand and the gravel, that's pretty narrow. They do kind of plow in a little bit uh, as compared to these tires. I just, hang on. I just put these tires on the, on the bike here. And I don't know if it's obvious or not, but they are definitely wider. Yeah, they're 26 by 195, so they aren't a lot wider, but they do have a nice wide profile on them, and it does make a difference. Uh, going across, especially on the property, it's not, I'm not sinking in. You really feel it, so anyway. I think that's probably the last update for the trailer, hopefully. My neighbors are pretty good. I get a lot of people stopping to help me out if I'm broken down or something like that. But it still would be nice to get home and not have to bother people, right? So, yeah, it's when I broke the spokes, that's what happened is one of the neighbors came by and gives me a ride home. So, anyway, that's it. Um, as always, thanks to the new Patreons and uh, thanks, Joseph, for the, the care package. Always appreciated. Links for all of that are in the description of the video. Um, anything food related, cookies, cliff bars, uh, that's all good. If you want to mail me something, that's cool. Or whatever you think I might need. Uh, Patreon is easier. Uh, or PayPal. And as always, click like and subscribe and share the video. And yeah, cool. I'm going to go sit down. I'm tired feel like I shot the whole video out of frame, so sorry about that. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Happy New Year. So when it was uh, full of snow, it was up pretty much to the top. There's a lot of gravel in here because I was not being careful enough when I was scraping. I was going for speed, not for quality, I guess. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pump out the water so I don't lose it, like evaporation or whatever. And then I'll come back in a few days and get the rest. As it was melting, though, I was um, raking the dirt and the rocks and the sticks and stuff to one end. So this is more clear water. Also, this side was in the shade, so you can see it's not melting as fast. Completely by random, but this cord is coming out of the shop and uh, it reaches all the way down to that tank there. So I don't have to run another extension cord and the hose runs all the way to the truck tank inside the little white thing there. The washer on this one. Is, I guess if it leaks a little bit, that's not a big deal. There's a lot of this, if I was gonna do it more than once a winter, I would probably try a little harder, but I'm thinking I'm gonna put the pump here. You can see how deep it is four or five inches, something like that. If I can gently sweep the dirt away from the bottom, so you've got some ice on there. Not sure how effective that was, but kind of make a spot or maybe I don't have as much gravel that doesn't suck up too much and we'll go pump it out so the power on and uh, I've already
already used some of the water out of the rain barrels for laundry. I did three loads of laundry. Anybody curious? I don't have any affiliate links or anything, but this is a sump pump I got from uh, Amazon. It's quarter horsepower, and it, it comes with the adapter, so you can hook up a garden hose. When I'm done here, I'm going to go around to the other uh, rain barrels and suck out what I can there also. It's good flow, not real clean, but it's mostly just sandy gravel looking. So there is a like there's probably half an inch of gravel inside this tank now. It's just sitting on the bottom. Kind of hard to see. This is 100 gallons here. There's a line that says 50. We're almost up to the 50. All right. So that's about the equivalent of two trash cans. That pump, if it's not sitting on a rock, it can drain it down to about an eighth of an inch. It, gets, it does pretty good sucking right off the bottom. So. Remember, it's a plastic tank, so don't break the tank. I think once I get the water out of here, I'll just let it dry in the sun for a few days, and then I can sweep the gravel out. Not too worried about that. like today and the rest of that should melt. It's really warm out here. It's probably 55 or so. Oh yeah, we're almost up to the lip. That's cool. Yeah, give that a few days and that murkiness will fall out and then we'll have pretty clean water. I probably, if I let this sit for a week, I'll probably pump this into the main tank and uh, just run it through a filter to get the last of the set the sediment out of it. So every little bit helps. It's more than 50 gallons. <laughs> yeah.
nothing to it. Free water.